I discovered that music can access every part of the brain. It's not only the right brain, you know, it can access every part of the brain. So I'm using music often in, in ministry now. Last week, Betty died. Several months ago, she fell and broke her neck. She had surgery, but she didn't have strength to carry her through that surgery in the mid-80s. She's not a Christian. I don't know all of her history. She may have been at some time in her past, but at first she didn't accept religious type of spiritual care, only just emotional support. Then I sang a blessing for her one time, sort of like a prayer. She loved the music. So I started singing hymns to her. She died last week and her son-in-law told me, you know, she accepted Jesus Christ because of your music. I got to see at least a little picture of the results in my life, but not always. I went to see Mary yesterday at 11.15. She's close to death. The chaplain that had been visiting her for months uh, is out of town on vacation. Invited me to follow up with her and her family. I heard of her vibrant faith, and even though she was unconscious, I started singing to her. The old rugged cross in the garden. Abide with me. Precious Lord, take my hand. At 11.45, I noticed a change in her breathing. I alerted the staff and then returned to the bedside. Something said, just share with her the 23rd song. And I was sharing the song. And as I said, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Mary took her very last breath. She died peacefully. I don't understand a lot of things. And much of the things of God and His providence remain a mystery to me. And when God called me to ministry almost 50 years ago, I never dreamed that the path I would be on. I'm still learning and stretching and growing, and I feel challenged and fulfilled in my ministry. I don't preach very often anymore, and I haven't baptized anybody in 15 months. And all I do is mingle. I mingle. That's what I do, one-on-one. -on -one. And I build trusting relationships, however brief. And I provide compassion and ministry to God's children whether or not they know Him as their Lord and Savior. And I bring a calming, peaceful presence to those in crisis. I'm following Jesus' example as I follow my call. Notice these words from the ministry of healing, page 143. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed His sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then He faced them. Follow me. That's where I work now. I'm building relationships. I'm building trust. I'm sowing seeds sometimes at the beginning end of a or the beginning of a relationship with God at the end of someone's life. I have so much more to say, but I've got to conclude. Does God know what He's doing when He calls us to serve Him? I know I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know what he had planned for me in any specific way. But I do know that he asked me to follow him and to trust him. And he knows where he's leading me. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and the future. What does the future hold? I don't know for sure, but I know He knows, Amen. and I know who holds the future, and I know who's holding my hand as He leads me on this journey, as I can't see around the bend in the road, but He knows what's there, He knows what's around the bend, and that's security as we follow Him, hold His hand, trust Him, 
Therein is our hope and our future, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it.